Welcome to Animals Voice Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin McKenzie, and very happy to be joined by Dr. Mara Cullen. Your website is www.thediversityspeaker.com. Thank you for joining me today. Hey, the pleasure's all mine, Kevin. Uh, Really enjoyed watching you. Uh, You're talking to us at our yearly conference today while we're recording this podcast, and I just sat through your session and you're so entertaining. Oh, thanks. You, you're, you're one of these people who has the gift of using humor to teach and enlighten people. And uh, I just think it's a tremendous trait. So I really, I just wanted to credit you. I had a, such a good time in your session this I morning. I appreciate that. I mean, folks were there for 90 minutes. And so you it's have to do... a long time, do, but you got to keep them... It is a very long time. You do. You have to keep them engaged. And so they were all in, and I appreciate they that. They were. You know what? I look around the room a lot during those sessions. And, you know, once in a while you'll see someone who looks like they're maybe zoned out. I didn't see many people zoned out nice. during your session. Everyone was very uh, glued to the things you were saying. So the, the, what you were here talking to us about was diversity. So I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, how you originally became interested in the topic of conversations in diversity. Well, so I tell folks I wrote the book, 35 Dumb Things, um, because I said most of those things. Mm-hmm. And through the, course of, through the course of my adult life, like I thought I was like really making connections with people. And at some point I realized not so much. And so I began to think like I can't be the only one saying these things. Mm-hmm. And so my goal was, you know, to let folks know, and then they can make the decisions. And it is through the grace and patience of other people that um, they let me know that what I was saying was can, can be misconstrued and, and why. The why is important because we keep doing the same thing unless we understand why it's problematic. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You referenced your book, so I just want to make sure that our listeners have the, the book title. So it's 35 Dumb Things Well-Intended People Say surprising things we say that widen the diversity gap. And uh, I'm, I'm going to be picking up a copy myself, so I encourage our listeners to do sale on this. Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. It's a commercial now. Um, let's, let's go back to what you were talking about a moment ago with conversations and diversity. How can a lack of awareness in conversations of diversity harm the workplace? Like how can it slow down productivity or just uh, mess up that, that um, group Uh, mentality or connections that we're all trying to make there's a good deal of harm the problem becomes is people people don't see the harm so they don't realize the harm Mm -hmm. is happening and so um, when we think of the folks that we serve um, when we have interactions with them if they feel a disconnect that usually may need may feel like they're not feeling um being treated respectfully okay and all of a sudden then it becomes an adversarial kind of relationship which is never the kind of relationship you want to be in and it was likely unintended absolutely and so and and so you don't even know sometimes you're off the mark Mm -hmm. which is why knowledge is important in any job right the more you know the better you become at it and Mm -hmm. people just think communication is easy and it's not you have to be intentional um and being able to read people's cues is helpful Mm -hmm. um and then as colleagues working in the same areas you know you see these people day in and day out and so if you start to bug each other, that's always communication. Yeah. And like if you and I don't get along, mm-hmm. then I'm less likely to take stuff to you or or to seek your advice or your counsel. And so we stay kind of apart. And in the end, not only is it unpleasant, but we don't we're not as good professionals as we could be. Okay. Uh, in your book, you highlight examples, and in the session I just sat through, you gave some examples. Can you can you provide some examples of things people will say or these common things uh, that are preventing diversity in a healthy environment? Well, and again, pe- people are, are, are thinking they sh- showing their best selves. So something as simple as um, I know exactly how you feel um, sometimes is a deal breaker because 
you don't know exactly how I feel. Okay. And so people start to get really, no, you don't. You have no idea. And, and, and they start to really sometimes get angry or they shut down, kind of fight or flight. Mm-hmm. And, and it becomes a conversation flipper because when you say those words, now you're going to tell me how it is you know how I feel. So now you've totally silenced me. Um, And again, that's not our intention. Or we say things like, you know, some of my best friends are X, Y, Z. And the intention really is, is to make one another feel comfortable. But the bottom line is you're treating me as a giant stereotype (laughs) because unknowingly what you're suggesting is, gosh, if I know one of you, I know how to treat all of you. And again, it's not what you intend but and I told the folks in the, in the um, session is that impact always trumps intent because the impact your actions have on other people um, is more critical than what your intention is because it determines whether or not they check in or check out of the conversation. I would like the record to show that I actually wrote down in the session, impact always trumps intent. Oh, See, you I was did? listening. How about Outstanding that? Outstanding work. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are your challenges when you're trying to, I guess, teach people this different way of, of uh, seeing things and looking through that different lens? Is, is it difficult to get people on side or have them see things from a different perspective? You can't change people's minds, okay. right? I think there was a, a point in my life where I wanted to, to change people, you know, because they had just not enlightened. Um, and that was just silly. Um, so the hope is, is to pr- provide them with some skills that at least keeps the conversation going. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, is, you could do everything right and it can still go wrong. Okay. Um, because we're talking about people's belief systems, their values, some, some things that really are the core of who they are. So my goal is not to change those behaviors, um, although I guess some days it is, um, is, is for them to rethink the impact that it has on other people. It's that whole seek to understand before being understood. Okay. Um, how can high stress situations impact uh, diversity and that healthy environment that you're kind of talking about creating? I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about our animal cruelty investigators and the things they encounter on the road every day. In our shelters at the Ontario SPCA, you've got uh, a lot going on. You know, staff uh, numbers are not huge and everyone's busy doing 10 different things at once. Can it be more challenging to be mindful when you're in those high stress situations? Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. No matter what the stress level is, right? We're not our best selves. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right? I think our best selves and we we're 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 we're, we're, we're relaxed, right? Which is why a lot of times people on holiday tend to be their best selves. At work when you're stressed out and particularly with the folks who work for the SBCA, you, like you said, they're overworked, they're understood, you know, misunderstood, and the the stress, particularly around the cruelty, um, is there's a lot of judgment too. Okay. Coming from both ends. Okay. You know, so we're judging them, they're judging us. We're kind of on our heels a bit, mm-hmm. um, and unfortunately, it's our jobs to try to reach out to the folks. Um, because there's two options, either you escalate or de-escalate conversations. Mm -hmm. My goal is always, how can I de-escalate the situation? Because in the end, it's going to serve me. Okay. It'll probably serve you too, but in the end, it'll serve me. Okay. Um, because when we escalate, well, you see where it goes. Um, and so not only are we talking about the original problem, but now we've Add, added another problem on top. And so uh, in the session, I, I shared a technique of, of um, the acronym BAR, breathe, acknowledge, respond. Mm-hmm. And somebody's got to be the big kid and show up first. Um, and unfortunately, at times, that's the people who are getting paid the, the not so big bucks to yeah. do the ever so right thing. 
Wow. Okay. Well, listen, I, I've appreciated the uh, the time you've spent with us here. I know you're very busy and you need to catch a plane. I do. Uh, so I, I want to thank you, Dr. Mara Cullen. Your website is www.thediversityspeaker.com and people can pick up your book, 35 Dumb Things Well-Intended People Say, Surprising Things We Say That Widen the Diversity Gap. Available on Amazon, I hear. <laughs> you heard from somewhere. <laughs> thank you so much for your time today. And thanks for joining us on Animal's Voice Podcast. Hey, the pleasure was all mine. Keep up the good work. Thanks. And, and thank you to our listeners of Animal's Voice Podcast. We appreciate all of your support. Uh, please continue sharing the broadcast on social media. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter at OSPCA Kevin. Do you have a, a social media feed you'd like to plug? Or? Yeah, I have a, I have a Twitter. I kind of do the tweeting in that. My handle is at Dr. Mara Cullen. Excellent. I will start following following you immediately. <laughs> um, and uh, we also encourage our listeners to get in touch with show ideas or, or uh, thoughts on the program. You can email me at kmckenzie at ospca.on.ca. Dr. Cullen, safe travels. Hey, thanks so much. Take care and we'll see you again. Uh, you don't have to have horse education. In fact, the basic app, that's what it's designed for, is the horse owner without a lot of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so it helps guide them to learn the basic knowledge about what is normal for my horse.